Shalom Chavrim, I'm Steve Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, boy, we've kind of had everybody on their toes here for the last couple of weeks, especially with uh, the Steve and Yana chat, looking into different things that are going on around the world, and uh, I, I, I can see how that just keeps everybody nervous, but listen, we want to know the truth no matter what subject we're dealing with, and today... I have up on my screen uh, a bunch of information that is probably going to be like maybe for you like it is for me, uh, with the exception of a small handful of people, rocket science. Uh, in fact, we're looking at uh, astronomy. We're looking at uh, the space, what's going on out there. And listen, I, I understand there's a lot of people that are flat earthers that don't believe in these things. Uh, so just bear with me. Uh, this was some information that was shared with me on a flash drive and there's a tremendous amount of information here. Most of this is completely over my head, but I want to share some of this with you for those of you that are interested in the, uh, uh, what would you call it, the Planet X, Nibiru, a binary star called Nemesis. Uh, it is a, a planetary system that uh, uh, is been reported by many different scientists uh, that will be coming our way and or are we going its way I don't know which one is going to be the answer to this and I know that uh, there's a lot of people that believe that's not going to be the case so I'm going to be doing this in sections as we go along and I'm going to be sharing with you some interesting things that I've discovered over time in this subject as well as we're going to take and look at some of this information that's been shared with me. Now, the, the brother that gave this information to me, I do not recall the brother's name right now, is at one of the conferences. And I, from what I can gather, I believe that if he's not a, a former astronomer, he definitely has the brain like that because this information is extremely in-depth uh, what we're going to be looking at here and the math that is used in here is far above anything I've ever even seen or could understand. Uh, so I want to show though to you real quick and then we'll start getting into more detailed information. He, he gives a lot of links in this information for me as well, uh, but he also um, gives uh, photos, pictures, some of those, like in the case of this picture right here. And uh, let me just see if I can, there's some particular areas I can blow up for you. This is one of the first ever satellite images using an infrared uh, uh, lens there that was ever used to be able to photograph uh, this particular image here that you're seeing on your screen. So uh, we have the Nibiru and its moons, its satellites. Nibiru means the planet of the crossing is what they uh, say that the, the name means. He, he, he put, it, put all this together for us and you know we're getting to see real information. Some of this information comes from NASA, some of it comes from other uh, telescopes, things of that nature there. This particular one is the earliest photos published on the web from the South Pole Observatory before, um, uh, let's see, I can't see, quite see what that is. Let me see if I click on the first part of it. It might allow me to see it. I guess not uh, being, nope, doesn't give me that. With, uh, I guess with infrared imaging of the brown dwarf, Cross from Antarctica, Antarctica telescope at five hours, 53 minutes, 27 seconds. And I'm not sure if that's a date, the 1658. I, I don't know. Maybe it was 1958. Not really sure about how that plays out. But anyway, uh, let me try to get us back to the original screen here. But he gives a tremendous amount of information. This is another one that's kind of interesting here. Uh, we can zoom in on here onto this yellow part and let me back out a little bit. I got too, too big of a zoom on that. And yes, maybe this way here you guys can see it. So I want to read to you a little bit on here. It says NASA's official designation best guess TRAPPIST-1 system, Nemesis, is a failed brown dwarf star with a mass of 12 Jupiter-sized planets. It cannot achieve fusion at its core, 
but can put out lots of infrared heat and light. Only infrared telescopes can see it. Presently, our binary twin star has seven planets. The outermost seventh planet is the size of Jupiter with a Neptune-sized moon. The seventh planet is called the planet of the crossing. It is circum a circumbinary planet orbiting between Nibiru and our sun. When Nibiru gets closest to our sun, Nibiru has two debris trails with a length of a, of a million miles. The tails contain an asteroid and comet-like bodies of ice rock. The orbital period takes 2,000 years along a highly elliptical orbit from the Oort cloud back to the sun. Earth's two solar telescopes, Stereo ahead and Stereo behind, image the seventh planet and its moon on November 11, 2016. See the Jupiter tab. Kelper discovered its position during its mission, uh, and the seventh planet has penetrated our solar system plane and is spiraling through it in a clockwise direction. At some point, it will come close to Earth and wreak destruction per uh, revelation. Massive temperature changes will occur as Nemesis or Nibiru swings around our sun with its six plus one planets. The sun itself will be uh, perturbed in a slightly new direction of degrees as it corkscrews through space on its journey to Vega. When the changes, change happens, we will leave the constellation of Pisces and enter Aquarius for 2,000 years. Uh, some, someone from NASA marked orbital, orbital paths of Planet 7 on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft's Worldwide Telescope Web. I captured all the RA and uh, 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 DEC metrics and fed the data to find orb program. The clo closest approach to Earth is 0 0.0150 AU. Now, I have no idea what AU is. We are feeling the gravitational effects now on our planet. Earliest past, uh, passed by estimate is in 2023 to 2024. Add 12 years more possible before main events since there were no observation dates to go along with the locations. The Hopi tribal calls the seventh planet the red uh, uh, Kachina, or Kachina, and its moon, the blue uh, Kachina. The blue Kachina is most likely the Anunnaki home planet. Researchers have published papers and recently on how to hide a planet using laser and using nano gold as a shield against infrared radiation. So what I want to share with you is a video here that you can find online. It's not easy to find this video either. It's very difficult to find it now. Uh, downsizing O-A-H-U-L-L-C is where I have uh, the video picked up. And the title, Thank You, Carlos Manoz Farada and Robert S. Harrington, uh, and they're thanking them because uh, Mr. Farada is the astronomer that came forth and published the information about the binary star sim system known as Nemesis or Nibiru, uh, Planet X, as some people call that. Uh, this man predicted uh, with amazing accuracy several different uh, uh, earthquakes, one in Chile in particular, says that the day that the, uh, he predicted on January 24th of that year, and he did this in 1939, uh, I believe it's the year that this happened, at 7.10 p.m. an earthquake would devastate Chile, but no one would believe him that this was actually going to happen. It was based on the movement of the of the planets and the and the systems above that he was able to see that but of course the, the earthquake did come and it had devastating consequences to it uh, also it says indeed with four hours apart his prediction was fulfilled and at 11 29 p.m for 18 seconds chile shook a major earthquake and uh goes on to say that uh, destroyed five provinces in southern Chile, killing 40,000 people. And he saw this, you know, as a result of his work. 
Uh, the people were terrorized and everything was destroyed in the minds of those who survived. Uh, it goes on to say that uh, uh, there was the memory of the man who had announced it a few days before. That was just from the people that survived this. Now, now we I believe this is Robert Harrington that's speaking now. Uh, and this was a television series they did in Chile about this. The predictions of Munoz Ferrada continued to confirm as time went by. He says, a series of, let me give a little bit of volume for our Spanish speaking friends there. A series of earthquakes between May 21st and 25th, 1960, the powerful tsunami. Que lo había anunciado unos días antes. That reached Alaska, the Great Earthquake of 1965, and Lagoa, and the earthquake in 1985. Valparaiso, Chile, are some uh, his correct predictions that modern scientists haven't been able to explain yet. With his dynamic geoscience, this genius scientist has surpassed all laws of modern astronomy through his calculations not only predicted numerous earthquakes, geothermal explosions, and climate change. In all parts of the world, he also discovered new comets and planets. Deciphering their trajectories, mass brightness, color, sidereal, coordinates, and orbital motions with amazing accuracy before being seen by the large telescopes in the world, this generated an astonishment in the world. Leading to Royal Astronomical Society of London to reshape its policy, stating that due to the unusual case of Mr. Manoz Ferranda, Ferranda all new comets would take the name of the one who first calculated and not from the one who discovered it by chance with a telescope. Now, what gets interesting though as you go into this documentary is that they go, they sit down with Mr. Ferrada, and this is before, I assume he's already passed away by now, but uh, this is what was stated there. The orbit of this comet planet that you say is a comet planet. Let me back up just a little bit because I want to catch the entire interview he does with him. To reveal the trajectory of the terrible consequences that very soon, and I'm, what I'm going to do, because we do have Spanish-speaking friends that, that listen in, that, that can understand what's being said, uh, like our good friend Dr. Rosa, I'm going to make sure that we have the volume on this loud enough for you guys to hear. I'll read it. Pause it, let them speak it, and then read it again. Okay, to reveal the trajectory and the terrible consequences that very soon. Herculubus, the comet planet, as he calls it, will have on our world. Now, this is what we call Planet X. He calls it Herculubus. I guess like Hercules, I'm not sure if that's right or not, but I assume that's what that would be. El 12 de febrero de 1996, esto se cumplió. It is very interesting that you did a study and traced with calculations and all. The brilliant comet se adelantó 36 horas en su tiempo orbital y pasó más cerca del Sol. The orbit of this comet planet that you say is a comet planet. 85 millones de kilometers. Luego de 59 años de investigación. Because its movement is not a normal thing. No. Este gran científico estremece nuevamente las bases de... That it has different speeds. It's a comet planet because it has an elliptical orbit. La astronomía moderna. Y a sus 90 años de edad, rompe el silencio. Like a comet, and because it has great mass as a planet. Para revelar la trayectoria y las terribles consecuencias 
que muy and that is why I call it a comet planet. O cometa planeta, como él le llama. Mm -hmm. And it is a planet with, back over and see that, and it is a planet Tuarcolus. with, o cometa planeta, como él le llama. with a tail, a planet with a tail. Uh, Munoz Farada explains that this great star approaching loaded. Algo muy es que usted... With cosmic energy does not respect the established laws of celestial mechanics. It has an elliptical orbit and travels between our sun and the black sun that is and by the way as we're going to get into what I'm showing you on the information I have and this is not clear enough I can see it a little bit better on the computer screen but you can see the math that he used is so much like the uh, the math that the friend of ours that shared this information with us uh, uses in his own calculations as well so it's going to be very interesting for you to get to see all this so let's continue on Con cálculos y con todo, la órbita 32 billion kilometers away de este cometa planeta. So here is this chart you show us that on this side is the Earth. Nos habla y nos dice que es cometa planeta porque su movimiento no es algo normal. No, que tiene unas velocidades. Our Earth's orbit around the sun, yes sir. Es un cometa planeta porque... And he enters the orbit here, passing very close to our Earth. Fourteen million kilometers away. Fourteen million kilometers. So here in your chart, you show us the dead star, the dead sun, this one. Explica Muñoz Ferrada que este gran astro que se acerca cargado de energía cósmica and around this dead sun it rotates no cumple las leyes de la mecánica celeste here at 92 kilometers per second está establecidas posee una órbita y so in addition to these 92 kilometers per second it has another speed y viaja entre nuestro sol y un sol negro que se which is more Terrifying, isn't it? It has three speeds. Encuentra a 32 billones de kilómetros. Entonces, Mananzo Ferrada confirms that this planet travels at three speeds. Aquí en este gráfico, usted nos muestra el gráfico. One around the black sun at 92 kilometers a second, another close to our sun at 76 kilometers a second. De que en este lado está la Tierra, la órbita de nuestra Tierra alrededor del Sol. And a third full speed, the full speed keeps it for half the orbit at 300 kilometers a second. Now, I have to tell you, friends, when this was first given to me by my good friend there, he explained to me that it is an elliptical orbit. Uh, and he said the speed at which it travels when it comes into, in from out from behind our sun. He said it will do like a boomerang. He says, but when it goes to shoot back out past our planet, he said the speed is enormous. And he said this is what's going to just cause chaos on this planet. Now, this is one reason why I have been wondering more and more about why we are not part, as far as the Northern Hemisphere, part of the Silk Road. Let me show you that map. Now, if you look on uh, any any of the maps that they show of the New Silk Road or the One Belt, One Road initiative that we've spoken about a lot here, we can see that they're connecting the world together. There's many different maps that you'll see on this. And amazingly, no matter which map you look at, uh, we see that the China uh, Silk Road is being reestablished like in the biblical times. Uh, it includes Europe. It includes uh, all of the southern hemisphere practically. Uh, even includes uh, portions of Africa. Includes Moscow. Uh, there's even been some talk about going up into the uh, North Pole region as well. 
But the one place you never see, no matter what you look at, you've got a, well, that's not a good map to look at there. Uh, but if we put in USA, uh, right, we don't see, I have never been able to find a single map as of yet. Here we go here is another good map to look at right there. The entire northern hemisphere is totally left out. Now you might say South, excuse me, South America as well as left out. But there is one, one map that in the New Silk Road uh, uh, publication here is not thrown out. So there is one map that I have found where, where China, excuse me, South America will be linked as part of the, the One Belt, One Road initiative. But the question comes to my mind, why not North America? Or uh, even in the case of South America, we're not seeing very much. My, my thought is, is that what we're dealing with, with this, uh, with the way they have set this new global trade system and trade route up, is it's because that part of the world is going to be facing when this Planet X comes rolling through here. That's been one of my thoughts on that. Not to mention that there is this issue of facing uh, a, a, a global catastrophe, uh, it's not a global catastrophe, but a, a war between the United States and Russia. And of course, if we get into a war with Russia, uh, it's another reason why we may get uh, obliterated. And it could be that the war is kind of pre-planned to be staged right about the same time that we're dealing with, um, that we would be dealing with the situation uh, going on with Planet X coming through. And you know, from some of the estimates that we're seeing, like what we saw in, in the chart here, that the brother that gave this to me is looking around uh, between uh, 2024, somewhere in that date there. Now there is a date in here, and I don't have it right in front of me here yet, but we will be looking at that in just a moment there, some of the other things that he shares with us on this. Uh, now, one of the things he explained to me, and this is something that also it was believed by Ferrado, the, the uh, Chilean uh, astronomer, is that he said the sun our planet is moving with the sun and that the sun does a spiral motion and our planet this is how this is how the movement goes and there again i realize i'm going to really probably get hammered by a lot of people on that saying oh wait what are you talking about steve the you know that's not the way it is or the earth is flat the earth is not flat i understand all these debates friends so listen just hear out the information and you pray about it and let God deal with your heart on it. So let's kind of move on on some other things that I've noticed inside these charts here. Moving into the second frame here, it's uh, actually named on here Goss on, uh, on our um, table that we have. Uh, the friend of ours that, that give this information to me, he's using Carl Friedrich Goss, uh, who is the famous uh, French mathematician. I think he was born in 1777, if I uh, I recall correctly and immediately this man here his his math abilities were just absolutely astounding At, in grade school he was already uh, formulating uh, math numbers just that would actually bl absolutely blow the mind there but I want to read to you here uh, just a little bit because he's using a lot of like I said a lot of math things like that that for me, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, just kind of like blows your mind away. This is the type of math uh, that's being used in some of these calculations here that I guess is what helps the astronomers to determine and to calculate uh, the, the traveling, the speed, whether it be a binary star uh, or, or a comet or whatever, so that they can calculate the exact time that these things will put past the Earth again, like in the case of Halley's Comet. Uh, so, and, and keep in mind, listen, if I get some terminology wrong here, I apologize. Uh, I am not a scientist, and uh, I do know that the brother that does this, he's, he's put in some of his own calculations, which I can't say are, are exactly right or, or not right, uh, but uh, he's put in, he's also taken this from, uh, from uh, his own biblical perspective of what he believes that some of this stuff means. And, uh, but what's interesting, though, is like in this uh, section here, says the final equation, which was the most important part of the entire method, expresses uh, ge geocentric distance in a, in a knowable way, um, involving only the three 
corresponding observations given in a geocentric longitude and latitude, the time intervals between the observations, the semi-axis major of Earth's orbit, and the heliosynchronic distances of the Earth at those three moments of observation. However, the normal task at the outset was not to find our own distance to the planet at any moment, or even three moments, uh, or but rather to find the elements of the entire orbit as seen from the Sun. Yet the only heliocentric relations retained in the conclusion of the, of the, of the first half leading directly into the determining the elements of the uh, sought orbit is that of the distance of the Earth from the Sun has Gauss led us off track or has he uh, and I, let me see if I can actually get the rest of this. Or has he only cast the observer in the role of a, meteor, uh, a mediator between the harmonic properties of the solar system in relation to the sun and that their lawful projection onto the sphere of creative investigation? A part of this that, like I said, for me, it's just rocket science. Uh, science. Uh, totally uh, is beyond my understanding, although he includes a lot of different links that you can look at, converting at radiance to degrees, uh, convert degrees to, uh, to, to radions, etc. And I guess this is what helps for uh, the person that has that type of depth of math to understand and to calculate uh, the course of this binary star system that uh, we're on a collision course with and so uh, so I just I, I show this to you just so you can kind of get an idea of the the depth that this has been placed into and that's been handed to me he says here the Sun processes through all 12 constellations one degree every 66.6 .6 years now what he's doing is giving a summation of the calculations that he's already done based on the information that he provides in uh, in this Excel format it says one complete cycle takes 23,976 years. Uh, 12 constellations averages 1,998 years per constellation. We are leaving Pisces and are starting to enter Aquarius effective uh, to Shri 1, 6001, September 1st, 2019. Think about that. This effectively ends the 120 years time, 50 years per Jubilee cycle. God gave the race of Adam for a total of 6,000 years. If the cycle of rotation is determined by the interaction with our binary sun through a shifting uh, 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 berry center. So he goes on to say our sun moves towards Vega, the solar apex star, and away from Cyrus, Vega is a constellation in Lyra, the harp along with the stars of uh, Altair and uh, Deneb. Vega can be seen low in the summer in the northwest sky during the dusk and dawn. Look east during the winter to find Vega. Look along and below Orion's belt to locate uh, Cyrus, the dog star. So let's move on. Now, rather than drag you guys out in a long video, because like I said, so much of this is over my head. I'd, I've not studied in on Nibiru, uh, Nemesis, Planet X, whatever you want to call this binary star system here. But I figure these are some of the more interesting things that a lot of people would be interested in here. Uh, he goes in here and he does, talks about the binary companion theory. And... Uh, you can look at binaryresearchinstitute.com to be able to see some of that information. But it says we are predicting that our binary companions will be found in an elliptical patch centered around the right ascension, 17 hours, 45 minutes, and a de declination of 22 degrees. And then he puts up here, this is one of the photos, uh, and it says here at 37 degrees, uh, 32 feet, 44 inches north at 97 degrees, 16 uh, feet, 7 inches west, longitude, latitude, I believe. Uh, our artificial second sun tracks our real obscured sun as Nibiru orbits nearby 
Eclipse in Derby, Kansas. It was taken on uh, the 8-21-2017. What is so interesting about this photo is that it was taken in Derby, Kansas at the peak of, the, of a solar eclipse. And I believe what we're looking at here is this is right here is what they're saying is Nibiru, uh, Planet X. And, you know, I don't know which part is which. I don't know what the little pink haze is. I'm not really sure as far as that on there. But uh, uh, there's several different images here that he shows. Uh, that one was in a mirror. I can't really see that one there. But you can see this one above the house. This was also taken in Derby, Kansas. I guess it's the same same person taking the pictures, just at different time spots. And so you can see again, it's right here, uh, just over the top of the house. Uh, and again, there again, you know, guys, I mean, I can't say what all these things are. All I can do is share this information with you. So the Trappist, this is interesting as well, because he, uh, one thing, as I was mentioning earlier, an infrared lens is what's used to be able to photograph this thing. That's at distances, and I didn't notice that that had been worded originally in here, but he has on this, uh, here it says, Wormwood, or the Horn God Planet X, as he calls it, the fire red dragon of old, orbits brown dwarf star called Nemesis, uh, our binary star, detectable only by infrared telescopes far away. Okay, so Nibiru Planet X, uh, circumbinary ninth planet in our solar system, planet of the crossing ten times larger than Jupiter, has a blue moon orbiting it the size of Neptune. Uh, red Kachina Planet X, ancient collision of Planet X former moon split uh, lower half of the Earth collision created our current moon and an asteroid belt between Earth and Mars. I don't, I don't know about all these things here, but it's just some of the things that are being spoken about here in this. Now, he also, though, included, uh, it's kind of interesting, some of the things that are included on here, but I'll get to it here in just a second. Um, let me see here. Uh, these two images that you're looking at now, uh, uh, the HD... 106906 stellar system created by Eric Nesvold and her team simulation. The left panel shows a zoomed in image of a ring uh, of leftover rocky and icy planet forming material that is rotating around the star. So I, I assume they're using uh, uh, infrared technology to be able to show that there. But it goes on to say the star is masked by the black circles. The different hues represent gradients and brightness in the disk uh, material. Yellow is the brightness and blue in the uh, dimmest. The right panel shows a f further out view of simulated system. The star is represented by the yellow circle with an arrow pointing to an exoplanet, HD 106906b. Neswell team demonstrated that the exoplanet is shaping the structure of the debris disk, which is shown by the white and blue dots encircling the star. Credit Erica Navolst, Carnage Institute for Science. And just so you can see this there, I'll, I'll zoom in on these here for you, get a little bit better look at these, uh, these uh, different diagrams there. Again, it's a simulated pattern but it can kind of give you, show you what they're looking at. And again, maybe some of you that are watching, this may make a lot of sense to you. Uh, but if you're like me, it may not make any sense to you. Uh, so anyway, the dotted line in this image is an uh, uh, elliptic plane of our orbiting planets. All right, that's this diagram right here showing that. Uh, but what I do want to show you, though, is one of these uh, let's see, this is the actual uh, observation of the HD 106906 taken by the European Southern Observatory. And I'm going to blow in on this one here because this is where they were giving you that, what I just showed you a second ago. Um, let me see if we get a little bit closer to it. Uh, let's try to, try to go really close. There we go, right there. So it's right there as you can see on your screen there, and that's where that debris field is there that they're looking at that's coming along with this planetary system that they're talking about. Now, I want to show you, this was one of the videos that was in this data that he shared with me, and uh, let me just put, it's called Best Ever Nibiru Planet X Update 2018, and I think this was done back in June. 
And this is where you don't need the infrared. Once it begins to get this close to home, you can see it much better. Let me play a little bit of this video here for you. This object is now at the seven o'clock position. I'm gonna catch it on time-lapse and regular video. Let's zoom in a little further. NibiruToday.com. The lens flare over here. Let's zoom in on that. To, uh, behind the trees. Oh my gosh, people. Let's get right with God. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. We'll kind of move forward into the video here. You can still see the trees blowing on it. But then you have this one dot. I don't know if that's one of its moons or or whatever it's traveling with it. Black object inside it's almost the center of this second object. Let me zoom out a little bit. Now I'll leave it just like that actually. Move the camera out a little bit. You can see the lens flare there. But this is showing you that, that what you're looking at is not a lens flare by moving the camera around to where you can see what a flare looks like. All right, let me let me just pause it right there. This is the lens flare right here from the light reflecting off of his lens. So that's why he's moving the camera around a little bit so you can see how it flares up over here. But this obviously is not a lens flare. Now, I don't know how far this system is behind the sun, but the point is, is we know how big the sun is. This is supposed to be, what, 10 times the size of Jupiter? Look at the size of this thing compared to the sun. This thing is enormous. Enormous. Let's zoom in on this one object. 12 times optical zoom plus digital zoom. So, like I said, just a lot of information uh, that we've been that's been shared with us here on uh, this particular uh, memory stick that was given to me uh, to be able to share with you guys. Uh, and you know, all, all I want to do is I want to be able to show some of this to you. And I'm hoping that somewhere along the line we can get some sense made of this uh, and that can be, you know, shared back as well where people that really know this type of information can, uh, uh, maybe, maybe it can be beneficial and, and we can get more from this. Uh, says here, and this is where he gets into his overview and the final sign, according to the Hopi legend, he goes into the, the, the different legends, things like that, talking about this. Uh, system as well. Uh, I, I can't say all that. Oh, wow, I didn't even know about these here. So we're getting into some stuff I was un unaware of that was even on this uh, on this flash drive there. So what we have here is called Jupiter. Uh, so that's just some of the interesting information that uh, was shared with me here. And of course, this is one of the infrared, again, like we started off in the beginning, the infrared uh, uh, images of Nibiru, the first one that was ever brought out. And, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, I don't know what it means uh, as far as, as we're looking at this, the, the different photos and stuff that have been taken of this particular uh, planet, the, uh, the system that's coming in, I don't know what to think about it. But uh, one thing's for sure, we should have our lives ready no matter what events come our way. Have your life right with Christ. I'm Stephen Benoni, watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.